Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Today we'll be learning about specific heat capacity Okay, look at the diagrams here So we see water in the bucket Okay, and then it says that water in the bucket becomes hotter faster than water in the swimming pool At the same period of time and then, have you ever experienced a situation where the sun heats up the sand and seawater at the same period of time? However, sand gets hot quickly and seawater gets hot slowly. Another example that you may have experienced is, at the same period of time, food cooks faster in a metal pot than in a clay pot. And why is that? Well, this can be explained based on the concept of heat capacity. Different objects have different heat capacity. Sand has a low heat capacity and gets hot very quickly, while seawater has a high heat capacity and gets hot slowly. So what is heat capacity? The symbol is capital C. So heat capacity is the quantity of heat needed to raise the temperature of an object by 1 degree Celsius. The rise in temperature of a body is an increase in the internal energy of that body. The average kinetic energy of a gas particle is directly proportional to the temperature. Another important point is, heat capacity of an object increases when the mass of the object increases. The formula of heat capacity is C equals to Q over change of temperature. The Q is the heat energy. So now what is the unit of heat capacity? Yes, the unit is Joule per degree Celsius. Okay, here is a situation. A material engineer is comparing specific heat capacity between different metals. He is thinking, which metal gets hot slowly? Since the heat capacity of a material differs with its mass, he needs to make his choice based on specific heat capacity. So the definition of specific heat capacity is the quantity of heat needed to raise the temperature of 1 kg mass of the substance by 1 degree Celsius. And the formula is C equals to heat energy over mass and change of temperature. So now we want to determine the unit. So look at the unit of Q. The unit of Q is J. The unit of mass is kg. And the unit of change of temperature is degree Celsius. Therefore, the unit of specific heat capacity is joule per kg per degree Celsius. Here is a table. The table tells us that every substance has its own value of specific heat capacity. So these are a few examples. So we have liquid, gas, and metal, and non-metals. So, so we can see here, water have 4,200 joule per kg per degree Celsius specific capacity. It tells us that 
it's a very good cooling agent. By the way, Q is equal to MC change of theta. What is Q? Q is the heat. Now you may wonder, how do we get these values? We need to carry out an experiment to determine the specific heat capacity of a substance. You need to carry out the experiment in a lab. However, you can watch the virtual experiment. First, you need to wrap the beaker of water and the iron block with tissue paper. Why is that? Yes, we don't want heat to be lost to the surroundings. Before we heat both of them, we must measure their masses. Then record the readings. Next, we need to measure their initial temperatures. The stopwatch need to be switched on right after you hit them. Observe the change in the thermometer reading. After 5 minutes, switch off the heater and record the highest thermometer reading as the final temperatures. We need to know the power of immersion heater or the heater and then we need to know the heating time and the masses of both of the substances, their initial temperature and their final temperatures. So when with these values, okay, we can calculate the specific heat capacity of them using the formula PT over mass times change of temperature, each of them. So what conclusion can be made from this experiment? Since iron block has higher temperature after 5 minutes, we can conclude that iron block has lower specific heat capacity than water. You can carry on and continue the experiment with other types of substance to determine their specific heat capacity. So now let's look at a few applications of specific heat capacity in our daily life. Wood has a high specific heat capacity and gets hot slowly. In warm weather regions like Malaysia, traditional houses are built from wood which functions as an insulator of heat from the scorching sun. In cold weather regions like the UK, the US, traditional houses are also built from wood. Heat from fires lit in the wooden houses cannot flow out because wood functions as a good heat insulator. Kan rumah-rumah di luar negara yang sejuk, mereka akan pasang uh, unggun api. Uh, jadi Haba dalam rumah tak dapat keluar daripada rumah disebabkan oleh specific heat capacity of the wood that is quite high. Okay, then kita tengok another example which is space capsule. Space capsule on its journey back to the earth encounters air resistance when entering the atmosphere. Boleh bayang tak? Okay, this friction increases the temperature and causes the space capsule to burn. Okay, so space capsule ni bila dia luar di um, angkasa akan ada geseran antara space capsule ni dan juga udara. Bila ada geseran akan berlaku uh, peningkatan suhu. Therefore, the outer layer of a space capsule is made from substance with a high specific heat capacity and high melting point so that it will not easily melt. 
Okay, and then we have cooking utensils. We have different type of them. Sometimes we have clay pot. Sometimes we have metal pot. Okay, and also we can apply this in car radiator system. Right, another example is production of lattice materials in the construction of green buildings. Ini bangunan energy commission. Okay, this building is built with an insulating concrete roof. That is a roof fitted with insulators. And it uses styrofoam boards. Okay, if I, as you know, styrofoam has a high, high specific heat capacity. And that can reduce the absorption of heat from the surroundings. Therefore, reduce the temperature inside the building. So, we use less energy to cool the building. Kan, dalam building kita guna air condition. Uh, the consumption of energy is lesser. Next, we have a natural phenomena example which is sea breeze. Land has a lower specific heat capacity than the sea. Therefore, temperature on land rises more quickly than temperature in the sea during daytime. So, during the daytime, the air on land becomes hot and rises upwards. So, if you still remember, this is convection process. Okay? And then we have another example which is cooking another cooking utensils. And another natural phenomena is land breeze. What happened during the night is opposite to the sea breeze phenomena. Can you describe them? 